Welcome back, my friends. If this is your first time, my name is Alex and I make videos on watch service, repair, and troubleshooting. And it's about fucking time that there was a video explaining why it's important that watch parts are clean and how you can do it without an expensive machine. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, let's get started. One of the biggest mistakes that new people make when they're servicing a vintage watch is they take it all apart and then they do some half-assed cleaning job to clean the parts. They put it back together, they lubricate it, and then they can't figure out why the watch is not working correctly. They've completely bypassed one of the most important parts of watchmaking, and that's making sure that your parts are clean. So I want you to start thinking about cleaning your watch parts in two stages. You have pre-cleaning, and then you have your final cleaning. Pre-cleaning your watch parts is important for two different reasons. The first reason is that it removes the bulk of the contaminants, the bulk of the leftover grease and oil that's on parts that you don't want going into your wash solution. By pre-cleaning your parts, it will extend the lifespan of your wash and rinses, ultimately giving you better results in the end. The second reason for pre-cleaning parts is it makes it possible for a good pre-inspection of the movement before you actually go into washing and reassembly. Many times when you're servicing a vintage watch, the parts are going to be so dirty that you can't visually inspect the jewel holes or the pivots or the wheels. So you want to get them clean so that you can see things clearly. The process for cleaning your watch parts is the same no matter whether you're using a $4,000 machine or you're doing it by hand. You want to use a four-stage process. One stage is cleaning the parts and the other three stages is rinsing the parts. First of all, there's no advantage in doing two wash cycles. If you need to use two wash cycles to clean your parts, then either you're not leaving it in long enough or your, or your cleaning agent's not good enough. And using two rinse cycles is not good enough to get all the contaminants off your parts. In order for your cleaning process to be successful, you need to have all your parts clean and chemically free. Now, what do I mean by chemically clean? Well, basically it means that you don't want any residue from your cleaning agent or your rinse left on the parts afterwards. If your parts are contaminated with residue, what it's going to do is pull the lubricants away from where you want them and put them where you don't want them. And in watchmaking, that's a no-no. Now, the purpose of the three-jar rinse cycle is pretty simple. When you take the parts and spin them off from the wash cycle, it goes into the first rinse jar. Whatever's left over from the wash cycle gets diluted in your rinse solvent. That gets spun off, and then it goes into the second rinse jar. Anything left over from the wash cycle that didn't come off in the first jar gets diluted even further in the second rinse. Now that gets spun off and goes into the final rinse cycle. The purpose of the final rinse is to just get any last remaining traces of anything from the wash cycle off so that the parts come out. No matter whether you're using a professional machine or if you're using this method, it's a good idea to track how many cycles you're running through the jars. In other words, how many movements are you cleaning before you start changing the fluids? When you change out your wash fluid, you just empty the jar, clean out the jar, and then add new wash fluid. Now, when you change out the fluids in your rinse cycle, you empty and clean out the first jar. This is the one that's most heavily contaminated with your wash solution. Jar number two, now becomes your first rinse cycle. Jar number three becomes your second rinse cycle. And the first jar you emptied out gets clean rinse fluid and becomes rinse number three. Now there's just some basic supplies needed for pre-cleaning. The first thing you need is some sort of Q-tip. So you can use regular Q-tips if that's what you have. But the ones that I've found to be the most effective are a brand by Fran Wilson called Nail Tees. The difference with Nail Tees is that 
They're much denser than a regular Q-tip, and they have a nice pointed end. The other style that works very well are these surgical sponge style Q-tips. They don't release any fibers, and they have a much more pointed tip on them. So any of these will work for you. Now the next supply that really comes in handy is what's called watchmaker's paper. Now, watchmaker's paper is just a thin tissue-like paper. The main difference with it is that it's lint-free. You can use just a regular paper towel. With regular paper towels, you have to worry about the lint getting on the parts. So you're also gonna need a small jelly jar or a small mason jar with a lid. This is what you're gonna use to pre-soak your parts during the pre-cleaning process, as well as you'll be dipping in here as you're cleaning the parts. The next thing you're gonna need is peg wood for pegging out the jewel holes. I like the two millimeter size as opposed to the larger size for pegging jewel holes. Although you can use toothpicks, they're not as soft and they don't form into the small pivot holes of the jewels as well as peg wood. Another good supply to have is Rodico. Rodico is useful for a lot of different things in watchmaking, but it's especially good for pre-cleaning because you could roll the teeth of the wheels through it and use it to clean off the pivots. When it comes to the solvents, professional grade watch part cleaning solutions are always going to be the best option. Brands like LNR, Zenith, and Elma all work equally well. It's just a matter of choice on what you want to use. The downside to products like this is that they're expensive ranging anywhere from 45 to $55 a gallon. And in some parts of the world, because they're considered hazardous material, you can't even get them delivered. So if it's in the budget to use these, this would be my first choice. Another viable option is a product called Napatha, also known as lighter fluid. This works reasonably well for removing oil and grease and is readily available in any hardware store or big box store. It's relatively inexpensive, the downside is it's a little harder to rinse off. So you need to be very diligent in your rinse cycles to make sure that you don't leave any of this behind. And whatever you do, don't soak your balance in hairspring in this. For that, you want something a little bit more specialized. As a rinsing agent, my first choice would be isopropyl alcohol, also known as IPA. If you're gonna use IPA, I would definitely recommend getting the 99% pure formulation as opposed to what you would find in a drugstore, which is only 70%. They're basically the same materials, it's just the 70% one is watered down. IPA is great because it has very low odor, it does an excellent job at cleaning oil and grease, and is good for both pre-cleaning as well as final cleaning rinse. This next product is one of those gold nugget items that many people aren't aware of, and this is a product called Hexane. If you're familiar with One Dip, which is a product specifically formulated and sold for cleaning hairsprings, hexane is basically the same thing. It's one of the best cleaners I've ever seen for cleaning oil and grease. It doesn't leave any residue, but it evaporates quickly, so you need to have a good container for it. And one of the best things is it's a lot less expensive than One Dip. So the first thing we're going to clean is the mainspring barrel. Now. I'm not gonna go through the process of opening up the mainspring barrel now, because if you're working on the ST36, there's no reason to open it. But if you're already working on a vintage watch, you already know how to open the mainspring barrel. So let me show you how to clean the mainspring. To start with, just cut a strip off the watchmaker's paper and then cut that in half. Holding the watchmaker's paper in your tweezers, just fold it over, fold it over again, and fold it over again. And now dip it in your solvent. Now while holding your mainspring, lay the watchmaker paper and lay it over the mainspring. Now grip it with your tweezers and gently pull the mainspring through the paper, which has the solvent on it, from one end of the mainspring to the other. Now simply repeat this process until the paper comes out clean. Now just take the mainspring barrel out that's been soaking in your solvent and with your Q-tip, just clean all the grease out from inside the mainspring barrel in the lid. Since you're removing the vast majority 
of the oil and grease from the mainspring barrel. This will help keep it out of your wash cycle. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. You just want to remove as much of the grease as you can. Once the mainspring barrel is done, go ahead and take a fresh Q-tip and solvent and clean around the inside of where the barrel bridge is and clean off each of the jewel holes on both sides of the main plate and all the bridges. Now we're ready to peg the jewels. Now the first thing you want to do is just sharpen your tip. So the best way to sharpen your peg wood is either with a scalpel or a razor blade. Start my Start by making long cuts across the peg wood to get the sharpest point you can. Don't try to be more efficient by using a pencil sharpener or something like that. What you actually want is you want the lines, the edges of the cuts to be straight and not rounded over. That will be more effective in pegging the jewels. Now simply insert the peg wood on top of the jewel hole and lightly spin it with your fingers. You don't need to push real hard. You don't want to push it so much that you displace the jewel and just lightly rotate the peg wood into the jewel hole. Then flip it over and do the other side. Don't forget to do the barrel arbor holes in the main plate in the bridge. On the small pivot holes, the soft peg wood will make its way into the jewel, essentially just burnishing off any hard dried lubricants left behind. And here's the key to the whole system. This is just an inexpensive mesh basket that I bought from one of the suppliers. I took a thin steel rod and ran it across the top of the basket, attaching it to this side of the handle and this side of the handle. Then I took a second steel rod and I attached it to this horizontal rod and I attached it again at the top of the basket. Now I'm not a welder and I don't have any welding equipment. So what I did. I started with a thin copper wire and wrapped it around each of the connection points to hold it in place. Then I simply took an epoxy for metal and I epoxied each of these connection points. If you're making one of these, one thing to be aware of is that the width of this bar that runs across the top of the basket really can't be any wider than the basket, otherwise it won't fit into the mason jar. And now what you have is a basket that will spin. Now for you guys lucky enough to have a 3D printer, you could probably 3D print something that would be a little bit more efficient than this. Now you can attach this basket to a drill or any other type of rotary device, and now you have a spinning basket. Now you can just simply take your small part holders, drop them in the basket, now you can add your plates and bridges. And wash your parts. To remove the excess liquid, simply insert it into your empty jar. and spin off the excess liquid. And now just repeat this process through the wash cycle and all three rinse cycles, spinning off the excess liquid between each stage. The last step in any cleaning method that you use is drying the parts. When you're drying parts, you don't wanna just let them dry in the air. You wanna dry them with a little bit of heat, and if you have moving air, that's even better. The purpose of drying with heat is to prevent any condensation on the parts. So there's several things you can use to dry off the watch parts. It can be as simple as a hair dryer. You can also turn the oven on just to bring the temperature up a little bit, turn the oven off, and then put the watch parts in there to dry. Or my favorite method is just to use a food dehydrator. Food dehydrators are actually ideal for drying watch parts because you have a flat tray that you can put the parts on. It uses circulating air, and you can also control the temperature. When you're drying the parts, temperature doesn't have to be high. All it needs to be is above room temperature. So now that all the watch parts are clean, the final step is to do your last inspection 
to check the jewel holes, check your parts again before you get ready to do your assembly. And now let's get ready for the bonus tip of the day. No matter whether you're doing pre-cleaning or doing a touch up on a part after the, all the parts have been washed, one of the most handy containers I've ever seen to do this are these containers made by Menda. This particular one is a glass jar with a lid. And the way it works is you just push down on the top and it dispenses a little bit of liquid up through the nozzle. Then you can just dip your Q-tip in the top. That way you always have fresh solvent and you're not dipping into a jar that may be contaminated with oil or grease. Now, I think Menda makes the best known, highest quality ones, but another alternative is this one. Basically does the same thing I think I got this one on Amazon for about $9 and I've never had any problems with it and it works the same way. I think they're used in the beauty industry for dispensing nail polish remover. In this particular one, I keep IPA alcohol, but if it'll hold acetone, it'll probably hold anything. Well guys, that's it for this video. I'll drop some links in the description on some of the products I talked about. Now they're not affiliate links. so. By all means, shop around and get the best price. And as always, if you have any comments or questions or ideas for a video, please drop them in the comments. I love all the support you've been throwing out there. The next video could be tomorrow, could be in a couple days. So if you hadn't hit that bell notification, go ahead and turn it on and you'll know exactly when it comes out. And until the next time, I'm out of here. <laughs>